Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. Or should I say radical? Well, actually, it's kind of radical exponential or exponential radical. Anyways, so we're going to be looking for x value here. 3 plus root 2 to the power x plus 3 minus root 2 to the power x is equal to 22. Great. So I'll be presenting two methods here and also briefly talk about, if I don't forget, a third approach. All right. So here's my first method. The first method is going to be more technical. Second method is going to be less technical. And the third one, I'll just talk about it. Okay. All right. So I do have this sum, which is interesting. And it's a non-standard problem because X is in the exponent. So we have to use a non-standard approach. Here's what we're going to do. First of all, notice that X needs to be an integer, right? What happens if X is not an integer? then you're going to deal with something like, let's say 3 plus root 2 is being raised to the power 1 half, then you're talking about the square root of this expression. Obviously, uh, it's not going to be, um, the answer, the sum is not going to be an integer, right? You can test it out. But anyway, let me just proceed because when I talk about all the th methods, I think things are going to be, be more clear. Okay, so here's my first method. I'm going to set this because I'm raising this expression, the radical uh, to a power, the answer is also going to be a number in this form. Uh, so these kinds of numbers are fairly interesting in number theory, even though this is like an algebra question, there's definitely uh, deep number theory concepts involved. So suppose this um, thing to the x power is, or it can be written as a plus b root two. Okay. So a and b are integers, because if you think about it, like, what am I talking about, right? So if you think about this for a minute, um, take, for example, uh, 3 plus root 2 to the power, uh, I don't know, um, 4. Okay, great. So when you expand it using the binomial theorem, obviously, you're going to get some integers like 3 to the fourth power, and then you're going to get something like, you know, 4 choose 1, uh, multiply by 3 to the third, and then you're going to raise square root of 2 to the first power. So you're going to be getting some integers and uh, powers of root 2. But with the root 2, even powers of root 2 are going to be integers, but odd powers are going to be something times root 2. At the end, you're going to get something like this. But what is so good about this is that not only you get it from here, but using the binomial theorem, we can also prove that, which I'm not going to get into the proof, by the way, if you raise the, its conjugate to the same power, you're going to get the conjugate, right? Conjugate raised to a power uh, is the conjugate. Great. So now this gives us something real nice. Why? Because we can add these. And that's what we exactly have, right, on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and do it, right? Basic algebra or arithmetic. If you add these two expressions, you're going to get 3 plus root 2 to the power x plus 3 minus root 2 to the power x. And we, we know that on the right-hand side, you know, things are going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with 2a. Oh, man, I should use 2b or not 2b. Anyways, I missed that opportunity. Anyways, so on the right-hand side, we have a 22. That means what? a equals 11. Beautiful. We got the value of a so easily, right? Is that going to be the same for b? Let's find out. Now, I got the value of a, so I kind of know what the power of uh, 3 plus root 2 is going to look like. But how am I going to find the other one, right? Well, here's the thing. Conjugates are here for a reason. You should multiply them. We added them. We got something nice. Let's, now let's go ahead and multiply the conjugates. What happens if you take this and that and multiply together? Well, obviously, when you multiply these two things together, you have to multiply the insides, which is 9 minus 2 from difference of two squares, which is 7. So this gives us something real nice, 7 to the power x. Great. That's what happens on the left-hand side. What happens on the right-hand side? Now, we said that these expressions are equal to two conjugates. So if you go ahead and multiply these two expressions, a plus b root 2, because this is what the first one equals, and the second one equals a minus b root 2, that should also give you 7 to the power x. Beautiful. And I know the value of a, value of a but I'm going to substitute that later. Let me go ahead and simplify this first. So this also reminds me some type of uh, Pell's equation, but let's not get into that. Okay, a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, a squared minus 2b squared, 2b 
squared to be or not to be a equals seven to the power x. Now, I kind of got a Diophantine equation and I know that a is equal to 11. So let's go ahead and substitute that. 121 minus two b squared equals seven to the power x. Great. So from here, hopefully I can find something. But one thing to notice, b squared is never negative. And notice that uh, b cannot equal zero because if b is equal to zero, then uh, three plus root two to the power x needs to be a and three minus root two to the power x needs to be a. So they need to be equal. But as you know, that's impossible. Therefore, b cannot be zero. Awesome. So b needs to be different from zero, which means b squared cannot be zero either. Awesome. What is that supposed to mean? It means that uh, 121 minus 2b squared, ex that expression, needs to be less than 121 because b squared is positive. Great. So now this tells us something about x because we have an upper bound, which is really cool. This means that x needs to be less than or equal to 2 because if x is equal to 3, 7 to the third power, it's going to be 343, which is greater than 121, of course. So x needs to be less than or equal to 2. But at the same time, x needs to be a positive integer. What happens if x is a negative integer? Then you get the reciprocals, 1 over something, 1 over something, multiply them. You're not going to get an integer. You can test it out. Anyways, so x needs to be between 0 and uh, 2. So x can be either 1 or x can be 2. So we're only going to test two values. Let's go ahead and do it. My equation is 121 minus 2b squared equals 7 to the power x. If x is equal to 1, this is going to be 7. From here, um, okay. Uh, if x is equal to 1, then uh, 2b squared is going to be 114. Uh, this doesn't look good. Uh-oh. b squared is equals 57, but b is an integer. Therefore, this is not going to work, unfortunately. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and test the other x value. So this is for x equals 1. It didn't work. Let's try x equals 2. Is that going to work? Let's find out. This is equal to 49. Well, I'm kind of skipping steps here. I know some folks are going to be angry. So let's not skip any steps. If x is equal to 2, this expression is equal to 49. And from here, 2b squared is equal to 121 minus 49, which is equal to 72, I think. From here, b squared equals 36. And b equals 6 because we're looking for a positive integer, right? If, uh, well, it wouldn't really matter much because, well, it would. Why? Because this is a positive, that's a positive. So, you know, b, if b is negative, that's going to be kind of problematic. But anyways, you can switch them around and you can find some other, uh, you know, results. But anyways, let's not get confused. b equals 6 is going to work. But we're not looking for b. We're looking for x. Therefore, x equals 2 is the solution. Yay, it works. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and talk about, so the answer is x equals 2. All right. Now, what is my second approach? And I also told you that if I don't forget, I'll talk about the third approach as well. So second method. Well, the second method, I know some folks are not going to like this. Please don't get mad at me because I've been saying this all the time. Guess and check is a problem solving strategy, whether you like it or not, right? Okay, so I'm going to guess. If x is equal to 1, then I'm adding 3 plus root 2 and 3 minus root 2, and their sum is 6. Obviously, that does not equal 22. So x equals 1 doesn't work. I'm going to test x equals 2. Beautiful. So I'm going to square this expression. That's going to give me, let's see, 9 plus 2 is 11, and then plus 6 root 2. And I'm going to square the conjugate, and this also reminds you that are going to be conjugates and I'm adding these up and I'm getting 22. Awesome! x equals 2 is a solution. Great! Now what is the third method? Well I said that I was just going to mention it. I'm not really going to work it out so let me maybe I shouldn't even write third method but here's how it goes. The third method basically and I'm pretty sure you'll find the fourth method and please let me know. Um, we have a function that is always increasing, right? Why? Uh, because it is um, a exponential, um, what is it called? Exponential function, the sum of two exponential functions with a base that is greater than one, right? So obviously both of these bases are greater than one. So uh, b to the power x, if b is greater than one, uh, this is going to be an increasing exponential function. Something that looks like, th that looks like this. That means that when, um, well, if you have an increasing function, 
it's only going to intersect y equals 22 at one point and from here uh, you can do the guess and check and that's pretty much it and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye